All right, FST, or I should say student of the new FST. Um, trying to get back on track here with the flip classroom. Sorry I was a little late tonight uh, on Tuesday doing the first one back. Um, this is actually about 8.2 and 8.3, and the plan's a little bit different this time. Since also we're trying to get a little bit back onto track with the whole flip thing, your uh, other homework for uh, Thursday and Monday is a little bit heavier. They normally still have a full LM to do, so I want to keep this kind of short. I don't want to have the video questions really be as heavy duty as uh, they sort of have been. Uh, anyway, so what you, I want you to do, and this, you know, this is going to be the do now for next class, is um, be able to discuss these things in your group. And like I was saying in class, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, peer um, cooperative learning to. Uh, sort of keep you accountable for homework. So when you arrive at class on Thursday, uh, first thing that you'll see is there's going to be this. It's going to be the do now after the video. and You'll be able to, you want to just be able to discuss these things in front of the group. So uh, I'll let you read those. Uh, when If you want to pause this and read these now, that's fine. Um, and that's the first part. That's really about 8.2. And this part's about 8.3. Today's stuff is about um, arithmetic sequence, sorry this is 8.3, arithmetic series uh, which is different than arithmetic sequence and 8.2 which is before that, sorry I've been out of order there, uh, which is about limits. So let's get to it. Alright, limits of a sequence. Uh, a limit is like when um, we're talking about series like that, sorry sequence, I get, the, I get the word series and sequence mixed up, sorry let me just back up here and be very clear about what a sequence is and what a series is. A sequence is a thing like this, a sequence is you know, we're, we've got these this list of numbers that we've been dealing with so far. The sequence is all over what we did on um, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And what sequence is all about is just that list of numbers. Series, which is coming up later, starts in 8.3, just to get you going on um, what a series is about. It's way down here. Series is about, okay, I want to take all those little numbers in the list and then add them up. A series is like a string of numbers within a sequence. Man, they both start with S. We had to learn them on consecutive days. Anyway, so back to sequences. Sequences are like this kind of thing, like this one I keep coming back to. Um, we can talk about, well, what's the limit of that? How big does this ever get? As I go to A sub infinity, like, you know, if this goes on and on and on forever, what's the uh, highest it can ever get to be? Sorry, I wanted to switch software there. I realized that when I ink on the, the Word documents, it really isn't uh, good for saving. Anyway, uh, yeah, and we talk about, well, how big can this possibly get? Uh, I'm talking about, you know, A sub, really, like, make that go huge. A sub infinity, that could be, that could be um, anything, really, because this, I mean, this one, as big as numbers you want to get, I can find a, I can find a value for N that's going to be bigger than, uh, make that number bigger than this. This number goes on forever. It explodes. It goes on up uh as high as I need to get. But there are some sequences that don't keep doing that. Remember we talked about E. If I take uh, the sequence 1 plus 1 over n uh, to the nth power, how big can that possibly get? We use this back in the logarithm chapter. Or if you just want to talk about something as uh, innocuous as... Do I have it down here? Oh, well, eventually down here. 1 over n, of course, you can read all this stuff. Um, 1 over n, think about how the number uh, the number 1 over n looks. Let's go back to here. If I talk about this, the sequence this, let me get this right, the sequence, let's talk about the sequence, a sub n equals 1 over n, and what happens to that number as things get large. We, we base a lot of this discussion about um, limits about uh, on this one. This one's called the harmonic. I don't know why they call it harmonic. To me, harmonic sounds more like um, sine, cosine, like waves, like sound wave stuff, because those are simple harmonic motion, that kind of stuff. Uh, this is called the harmonic sequence. What's the limit of this? Well, at the beginning, it's 1. That's a sub 1. That's a sub 2. That's a sub 3. a sub 4, etc. And what happens to this eventually? Well, you get some pretty crazy fractions. Dot, dot, dot. Eventually, you get to stuff like 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, 1 over a million. These stay positive. 1 over very large, 1 over, a, you know, 13 billion. Um, and this is a you know some eventually some really tiny number. It's still positive though, but as big as this ever gets, no matter how big a sub n gets, a sub n is always going to be positive. Uh, but it gets less than just about whatever number you could possibly pick. So we say if n, if we assume n would go all the way to infinity, um, 
and that's how they write this, uh, we say the limit of that, the limit of, so this is like a big function notation, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n, or the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, the biggest this could possibly be, or the number that it never quite gets to, the number that it uh, is kind of like being pulled towards like a magnet, but never really gets there. It's like asymptotes when you're graphing. Uh, I mean, if you're going to graph this thing, 1 over n, um, we're starting with positive numbers. The first one's 1. So at 1, the value is 1. But then after that, it quickly goes down, and it goes down, 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 and it never, ever gets to zero. Okay, the end of that looks kind of funny. Uh, it never quite gets to zero. It makes me mad. Uh, and, of course, they should just be integers. It shouldn't be a continuous line. They should be actually just the dots at certain points along there. But they're going to keep getting closer and closer and closer to zero, as we see. It never, never quite gets there, but gets as close as you would ever need it to. So the limit of this one actually equals zero. But I just go through all that to tell you what, what the idea is of, uh, about limits. Technically speaking, it's actually not cool to put this uh, a sub infinity there. Uh, you can't talk about whoops. You can't talk about uh, a sub infinity. That doesn't make sense. That that's not allowed. Uh, that's supposed to be a actual integer there. So the closest you can get to saying something like a sub infinity is to say the limit as n and they actually use this little arrow here as n goes to infinity of a sub n. So it's like this whole big thing here is like what I was just calling illegally notated as a sub infinity that, that's kind of that's kind of what this thing means uh, so it's like the biggest this this thing could ever get now right now this, I mean this one could go of course go crazy this one down here stops at e um, all right if it goes crazy and goes on forever like like that first one we had that goes up up and up and up and up and some go down and down and down negative uh, the ones that are geometric usually that are being multiplied by some number bigger than one they'll go up and up forever uh, those are called divergent because there is no limit the limit goes on to infinity, and really, who cares? They're not very interesting. You could say the limit does not exist for those uh, because they go on forever. The ones that are more interesting is where the limit is sort of converging on some number, like the one we just looked at. The limit is approaching zero, uh, and that's called a convergent se sequence. Um, they don't have to approach their limit from one from one uh, one direction. The one we just looked at here was like this number from uh, 1 over n is starting to get closer and closer to zero that way. You could also have one, um, I'll just use the same one I used in the notes, what was that? Um, this one, negative 1 to the nth power over n. Let's use that one. Uh, and they use c in the book for some reason for this one. c sub n is negative 1 to the nth power. Now negative 1 to the nth power is kind of interesting because uh, you know, you take negative 1 to the first power, it's negative 1. You take negative 1 and square it, you get positive 1. You take negative, n to the, negative 1 to the third power, and it becomes negative 1. So you get this flip-flop positive negative. Now, these are all the numerators. The numerators are going like this, which is kind of wacky. And the bottom is just going 1, 2, it's just n. So it's just 3 at the third term, 4 at the fourth term, etc. So I get these numbers that are, you know, if all was positive, it would, it, you know, I kind of know what that does already. It starts at 1. You know, it starts at 1 and it starts to come down. And by the time you know, it goes to infinity, we're getting really close to 0. Well, this by the time I get to the second term here, oh, whoops, this one started at negative 1. I'm sorry. Most of the time it makes sense. All right, so it starts at negative 1, but then right after that it jumps up here to positive half. It's closer to 0, but it's on the other side. And then for you know for 2, it's like, or sorry, for 3, it's a negative third. And then 4, it's positive quarter. And then negative 1 fifth. And then positive 1 sixth. And then negative. So this is kind of a wacky, zigzaggy kind of idea. But you notice we kind of have this behavior going on up here and this behavior going up here. So still, even so it's even though it's still sort of zigzagging across the axis, and, and we're, we're talking about numbers that are uh, changing by going positively and negatively above and below 0, they're, they're approaching zero from both directions at the same time. So it doesn't even matter that I'm kind of approaching an, uh, a really, you know, no matter how big n gets, I know that the final, you know, the, ver the, the value of a sub n could be slightly above zero or it could be, I mean, it's either just barely above zero or it's just barely below zero as n gets very, very large. I know that no matter what, it is extremely close to zero. We can still say, even though this, this one seems a little different than the other one, we still say that the limit of this one as n goes to infinity is uh, of c sub n is still zero. And that may seem a little odd. It's a little harder to prove. Um, 
but uh, at this point, since we're new to limits, I'm just kind of saying, well, you have to believe me. I think it's I think it's easy to believe that this thing kind of funnels down and gets closer and closer, pinned in close to zero. You know, eventually you have numbers like negative one over some huge odd number, like oh, I was using thirteen before, thirteen thousand and one, and then the next number after that is one over thirteen thousand and two. They're both very, very close to zero. One's above zero, this one, and one's below zero, this one. But each one is closer to zero than the last one was, even though it's on the other side of zero. Being on the other side of zero as we go from one to the next is not important, is what I'm saying. This is a discrete math idea. I'm not really connecting the dots here. I'm just seeing what are the dots approaching. And each one is getting actually successively closer to zero. Okay, a little more about limits, now that you know what a limit is and how it works. Uh, we're talking about the limit of this sequence, this is the one that goes half, a third, a quarter, a fifth, eventually it goes down to one over a zillion trillion, and that gets really close to zero but never gets there, so the limit of that sequence is zero. Uh, if you took all these numerators and multiplied them by three, so we're talking about three, three halves, three thirds, three quarters, I wrote that here, but I, um, I reduced some of the fractions, like three thirds are reduced to one, and Three sixths are reduced to half. Uh, that one, notice from here, it's if you look at the half, it's still going to keep going on down. Three sixths, three sevenths, three eighths, three ninths, three tenths, three over three zillion. It's going to keep going down. Three over fifteen pi times ten to the twelfth. Uh, we have three over some enormously large number. Who cares about the three? Three over infinity is still going to be zero. So if I take a um, uh, I take some some sequence and multiply all the terms by by some multiplier three. Uh, the limit is still going to be three times as big as the limit was before. Well, it was zero before, uh, but three times zero is still zero. So uh, and there's going to be some laws here written down in a minute. Um, that's one of them. If you uh, multiply a limit by multiply everything in a sequence by by some number, then you're multiplying the limit by that same number. Uh, if you add something to every term in a, in a sequence, like if I took that same one again, the one half third quarter, and I add three to it, so uh, three again, but we're going to add instead of multiply. So this is three plus one, three plus a half, three plus a third, three plus a quarter, I just reduced the fractions, three plus a whatever fraction, then the limit of that is guess what? Think about this as it goes on towards infinity. It's going to be 3 plus some infinitely small thing because this 1 over n is infinitely small. The n is not affecting the 3 at all. Remember, I'm adding 3 to everything. I'm adding 3, uh, as, no matter how small the, the extra bit here gets, the, the 1 over n, there was still a 3 added on before that. So I get 3 plus 1 over n, and I know the 1 over n as n explodes. 1 over n becomes 0. This is now 3 plus 0. So like adding 3 to all of those elements of the sequence. Uh, at the end, all I do is I added 3 to the limit. The limit used to be 0. Now the limit is 3 plus 0. So the limit is actually 3. Anyway, so they give you a bunch of these rules. The first, I, I, this is law 2, the, the first one I have in this table. The first law was kind of one of these laws that everything is based on. Law 1 is actually this one, that the harmonic sequence, the one that goes 1 over n, that one explodes. As n explodes, 1 over huge becomes 0. Uh, then they go on from there. And 2, I kind of did some of these already. Uh, a little bit out of order. The limit of a constant sequence, this is kind of silly. If your sequence is, you, you've somehow proven that your sequence just turns out to be the same number every time, then that's its own limit. It's approaching 5. It's going to stay 5 forever. The limit as n goes to infinity, as I get the infinite term of this sequence, guess what? It's going to be the same thing, if you know that that actually continues. Um, you can add two sequences together. Say I have two totally different sequences, and I try to give an example here. If I took every term in this sequence and added every term to uh, every term with this sequence. It's a little different than when I just added three up there. It's like I have here I actually have two totally different sequences. And if I add them together, you know, the first one with the first one and the second one with the second one and the third one with the, if I add these up, I would get the limit the limit of all that turns out to be the limit of the first one plus the limit of the second one. So uh, the limit idea is sort of distributive. And all of these rules, as you read through them, all of these rules are like that. The sum of the limit is the limit of the sums. The product of the limit is the limit of the sums. Uh, or sorry, the limit of the, of the products. So um, that distrib distributive idea uh, comes back over and over again. Uh, I'm going to pause right there. Uh, you can read through the rest of these rules. Uh, that's enough to get you started, I think. And we'll, we'll get to the, the heavy nitty-gritty. I mean, some of this is really ugly. We'll get some of the nitty-gritty in class. Next part will be 8.3.